Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Jesse from Geronimods and I'm glad to be back. I've been away for three weeks on holidays. Uh, we went to Sweden, me and my girlfriend went to Sweden with a, a mobile home, with a camper. And uh, in the background you see the footage of uh, us driving to Sweden uh, across the, the, the big bridge that connects Denmark to Sweden. So that was really awesome, but I'm glad to be back and working on my car again. And in this video, we're gonna be full servicing the Master 3 um, with everything from filters to oil changes uh, to spark plugs. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. So I'm hoping you're gonna enjoy this video. And if you do, leave a like and maybe subscribe to my channel. Thanks in advance, and I will see you in the next one. So as you can see here, this is all the stuff we're gonna be needing to service the car. Uh, we got some cabin filters, some air filters, spark plugs, oil filter and new oil. We don't have transmissions fluid and we don't have um, brake fluid because uh, those things have been done very recently. So I'm not gonna do that today. Uh, but this is the stuff that also hasn't been done for I think less than a year maybe but still we're gonna do this today and I'm gonna show you how to do it so you might be asking why I didn't buy the original master stuff uh, but this uh, Bosch ones and this uh, Castrol Edge is because uh, I was told that it doesn't really matter with this stuff if you buy it from Mazda or not uh, the gaskets that you use all over the car are important to buy from Mazda themselves but for this stuff it's okay to use the aftermarket stuff and really I've been using Bosch for every car I have owned since the last six years and it never gave me any problems and it always just ran fine so um, I trust this uh, stuff will be good and if I'm not happy with it next year I will uh, be using the Mazda original stuff. So I'm now at my uh, parents driveway where I'm gonna work on the car. If you're not drove the car before you start changing your oil make sure you run the car for around three to five minutes just to get the oil a little bit hot or at least warm not hot but warm so it will flow uh, easier and uh, it will drain easier uh, because the oil is a little bit thinner when it gets hot so make sure you do that I will start with the interior and the air filter so the car can cool up a little bit more and when then that's done I will start uh, draining the oil and start uh, working on the spark plugs but uh, because the engine is still a little bit hot I will start with the two filters and after that we'll uh, do the next part of the surface. Okay so here's the air box, um, it's really easy to do this, uh, you can do it in two ways, you can unclip this, it's the MAF sensor. Um, screw this loose, you see a little screw in here, um, it's a Phillips head or you can do it the easy way and that's just unclip these two, very easy, just lift it up a little bit, you can see right here, you can see the, uh, the filter that's in there and you can just pull it out and put in the new one, this is the old one. Doesn't really look that bad. It's a little bit dirty, but nonetheless, it's not that bad. So let's put in the new one, which is this one. It looks a little bit different. I actually like this design better. I don't know if it's more expensive or not, but it looks a little bit different. But you can compare those two, and if they look like they're gonna fit like the same shape, same size. This one is a little bit thicker, so let's see if it fits. You put it in like this, so that's not really hard. Uh, with this side below, this side up, so let's try. check if it's seating correctly it looks like it's okay so you can put the filter back in this place put on the clips put on the 
other clip, which is over here. Yeah, after fooling around a little bit, this was in the way just a little bit for me to push it in correctly. So you can see now, this side is in correctly. Just seat it nicely, so it's easy. This has to be very easy, you know, you have to just do, have to do this and it has to be close and this side, same thing. So, yeah, that was the air filter. Let's get on with the interior filter. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see, but when the interior filter is behind that little, this little piece right here, I'm tapping right now. So, uh, what you have to do first is uh, remove this one. At least that's what it said. There's two clips, one on this side, like above. Maybe I can show this clip, this little fluffy thing here. And on the other side, the same one. Maybe I can do it while showing you. It's pretty hard to do this with one hand, but uh, maybe not. Okay, I could just fall. I, I, <laughs> I removed it just now, just put it back so I can show you guys. Um, so, this little cover here. You have to pull it off, it's really easy, you just put a little bit of force here and you just rip it off. Clicks in really easy. So, if I'm not mistaken, the um, filter is behind this little, little piece. So, wait, let me show you right. So, cram in here. So, this little piece, you have to unscrew this one, this little Phillips screw, and that one. And I think you can remove the um, this little piece and then behind there there's the filters so uh, i will show you that uh, but first i have to get a screwdriver i'll be right back so yeah uh, as you can see i pulled it off it was easy as i said it's only those two screws i unscrewed and then there's a little tab uh, the, like the i don't know if you can see it very well here on this side Jeez. so cramped in here so on top of the thing there's a clip right here I'm tapping it right now and if you pull that clip just uh, it just comes off very easily so I'm gonna clean every debris and shit that is in here and I'll try to remove the filters okay so this is what the filters look like now uh, they're pretty disgusting actually I don't know if this is just from a year because the guy that I bought them from the car from around a year ago said uh, it had had uh, a full surface so um, that's pretty dirty not that bad but still pretty dirty so I'm gonna change this for the fresh ones um, it's really easy I not, don't know if I can film it because it's so cramped and dark there so I'm probably not gonna show you but what you have to do it's in the, you have to put them in, in this order so this is the top one it has a little foam piece here. You just put it in and slide on, like up until it clicks in. I'm gonna tell you how easy it is when I um, do it. This one is the, the bottom one. And you can just push it in really easily, supposedly. So I'm gonna try it. So yeah, I just put the filters in. Um, was it hard? No, it was not really that hard. Um, it's a little fiddly um, and it's pretty cramped in here so you have to lay I, I'm laying on my side right now uh, to get access to it um, and it doesn't really click in or something it's more of a, a tedious feel if it's correct but I'm pretty sure it's okay now so I'm gonna put the, the little cover back put the clip back in and put the two screws back in and then uh, this job is done as you can see there's a lot of debris here that uh, fell out I'm gonna clean it later with a vacuum but uh, yeah it's better to clean it as you can see because after only a year this is pretty dirty and I know people who probably never did do this uh, when they have a car for over like 10 years so you can understand that at some point this one is gonna be clogged up so um, yeah I'm gonna screw everything back together and uh, job's done so yeah, I'm done with the interior filter, of the cabin filter, and I'm done with the uh, air filter. So the next thing I'm gonna do is jack up the car and start draining the oil um, to put some new oil in and start with the star plugs uh, and start with the spark plugs. Um, so yeah, 
first I'm going to jack up the car and when I'm sure everything is uh, correctly I'm going to disconnect the battery. It's really important because when working on a car you don't want to uh, short something out or get yourself electrocuted. Maybe that's uh, more important than the first one. So make sure you disconnect the battery just to be safe. Um, and that's pretty much it. So as you can see, I jacked up the car, um, just to show you, I put a jack stand on this side, jack stand on this side, I put a, another jack, car jack, right below the subframe, right, right in the middle, just to be sure, and then next I'm going to put this wheel below me as well, next to me, so if we buy some crazy accident of the car falls it falls on the wheel but I have like three safety measures so it's gonna be fine um, I think I have to remove the under tray I will show you right now like <laughs> okay it's pretty hard to see but this piece has to come off the oil <sighs> filter is really easy to access like I can just even without removing this I can just replace it so it's definitely one of the most easiest oil filter change I gonna do Okay, you see this red plug? That's the oil drain. So, you don't have to remove this to change the oil and the oil filter. So, this is really easy for me to do. Um, I think this is standard though. I asked somebody if it was hard and they said no, you have to remove this plate or otherwise you can get to it. So maybe this one, I don't know, this looks, this looks stock to me though. I'm not sure, but. Maybe somebody cut a hole in it for some reason. But yeah, if it works, it works. It's really easy now to uh, change this one, so I don't really mind. So yeah, I put in a new uh, crush washer. And I'm gonna check if everything drained out. It's still dripping a little bit, but yeah, I don't really care about the dripping. Um, so I'm gonna turn this plug in a little bit, and then I'm gonna remove the oil filter because uh, when the plug isn't fully um, put back in the oil filter will lose more oil and that's a good thing so I'm gonna put this back but just turn it like once or two times not uh, fully so so all right the old filter is off this is the new one uh, I was struggling like a bitch with this um, not sure why but um, yeah it was for some reason it was really hard because First of all, it was tightened with the force of, I don't know who the fuck tightened this. Um, I don't think they put a little bit of oil on the ring. A lot of people do this just to make it uh, easier for the next person who is uh, changing the filter. And this one clearly wasn't. Um, this is the new one, I'm just cleaning it a little bit because, um, yeah, why not? Um, so yeah, this is the new one. Um, I think I'm pretty stupid that I didn't get it off. I really had to stab the other one. Uh, maybe I can show you. And here's paper. So as you can see, <laughs> I absolutely stabbed the living shit out of this thing just because uh, I couldn't get it off. It was really weird because, uh, look at all these holes. Um, I'm not sure why, but for me, and that's, that's what I'm saying, I'm probably stupid. Um, okay, so this thing is turned like this, right? I'm gonna show you, Jesus, it's full of oil. I'm gonna show you, so normally, righty tidy, lefty loosey, right? So turn it to the left, that's loose, turn it to the right, that's tight. Uh, very easy, but for some reason, this was unscrewing like this, and it was loosening no and it was tightened this way so i'm not sure what that's about maybe i'm stupid and i don't get it right now but 
Yeah, I tried it with a lamp here and it had the same was the same exact thing. So I think I'm stupid. But whatever, it's off, so I'm just gonna install a new one. I first gonna fill it with some fresh oil because the um, oil filter goes on like this, so it's really easy to um, uh, fill it with oil first and then screw it on. I know there's a lot of controversy of should you do this or not. Uh, I have to rule if it's possible, yes, and if it's not possible, then no, because if it screws on like this, yeah, you can put oil on it because it leaks out. So. I'm gonna do fresh oil, put a little bit of oil on the seal so I can get it off easier next year. And then I'm gonna put it back on. So I'm gonna show you that now first. All right, so put the funnel in here. Get your oil. Not sure how much goes in here. Don't wanna overfill it because I have to still put it in. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit of oil from here and uh, that oil I'm gonna use to... Yeah, just use my fingers. So I'm just gonna tap it a little bit, a little bit of oil and just put it on the outer edge. Just so the install and probably disassembly or the install is gonna be way easier. So I'm gonna put this back in the car. Make sure it's seated correctly, so it's easy to turn. And you have to hand tighten and tighten it. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to the spark plugs. The oil filter is in, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just loosen those two bolts first. So those two are 10 mils. Apparently it looks like he said eight, but it depends. Pretty easy to loosen. Especially with a little bit of it. So turn it to the side. You have to remove the intercooler. Yeah, it's a 12. So you can loosen those. So that's the two. There's one in the back here, and there's like one, two hoses you have to connect and you can take it off, so a very easy job also. Let's get going. So now it's loose, as you can see. So you have to unclip, unclip, or not unclip, unscrew. Okay, so you have to unscrew this Phillips head or unbolt it, whatever. Uh, and there's one here so also, and then you can just pull your intercooler off and you have access to your spark plugs or your spark plugs is under here, therefore, so very easy also. You also have to disconnect your blower valve, you can also take it uh, off with it. Um, you can choose to take off the entire thing, so you only have to uh, uh, unscrew two bolts. Otherwise you have to remove this little cable, this little line, this line in the back. And um, take it off with the integral number. I'm going to choose to um, just unscrew the, those two bolts and be done with it. So as you can see now we have easy access to our L. now we have easy access to our coil packs. One, two, three, four. Um, yeah, just unclip them, screw them off and put new uh, spark plugs in. So not that hard of a job. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, of course, disconnect your battery first because you're gonna work with electronics and stuff. So uh, you don't wanna mess anything up. So yeah, first make sure you disconnect the battery. So what I like to do, I go one by one, just from left to right or right to left or whatever, but just so you know where you're at. So I start from the left, go to the right. So start off with disconnecting these tabs. Looks like a push. 
Yeah, it's a push down and disconnect. So start with one. Sure you don't get any debris in here. Wrap it up. Just put a little bit of paper in here. You don't have to compress, otherwise we just blow everything off. Okay. Okay, so this is a really cool tool. Uh, there's a little rubber inside, so you can uh, grab the spark plug and it uh, stays in there if you uh, pull it out so uh, if you don't have this I really recommend buying this or get a set where this is included got a little extension I'm just gonna get it out of here They don't look that bad. They actually look pretty good, pretty decent, healthy engine. Okay, so these are new ones. As you can see, um, these from, uh, are from Barsh. They have the same uh, specification as the original Mazda ones. These were real Mazda ones, by the way. As you can see, it says, Ma it says Mazda on it but these uh, are gonna do just fine. I got here a tool to measure the gap between the, uh, yeah, you can see where it makes a spark. That gap between those two spots has to be exactly 0 0.7. And with this tool, it has numbers on it and it's how thick it is. And you can measure if the, the, the spark plug is uh, gapped uh, correctly. So I'm gonna check if this uh, is the case for these uh, spark plugs and I'm gonna do it for all the spark plugs. So let's check. Yeah, it just fits. So, this is perfect. All right. So I'm gonna just do the same thing with this. Put it, put it back in, push it a little bit, then turn it in, hand tighten it and then uh, apply the torque specs for the spark plugs with a torque wrench. So I don't have a torque wrench that is um, capable of these low numbers that uh, the, the uh, spark plug has to be torqued to. Uh, the manual says 8 to 10 pound feet of torque. Um, so yeah, and uh, my uh, torque wrench is uh, rated for higher thing for higher newton meters and pounds. So just tight it really tight. Just don't overdo it, but just really tight. It's not that hard. And if they're in there, they're in there. So. It's gonna be fine. Right, so um, I will put the coil pack back in, connect it again, and then we move on to the next one. Uh, I'm not gonna show you this in, in, in real time, just make a time lapse of it uh, to show how I do it, but it's just the same thing over and over again.
so before I try and start the car, there are a few things that I need to check. Uh, I just walked through my own checklist um, to make sure I did everything all right. So first off, uh, did I fill the car with new oil? Yes. Um, was it leaking underneath? No. Did I torque down the drain plug bolt? Yes. Did I check if the oil filter was attached or uh, screwed on tight enough? Yes. Um, did I put everything, uh, all the coil packs and uh, spark plugs back uh, in the car and tighten it? Yes. The torque? Yes. Did I put back the uh, intercooler? Yes. Did I fasten everything? Yes. Did I put my blow valve back and torque it down? Yes. I connected the battery? Yes. Um, did I forget something? I didn't unplug the air filter, so that's still all right. So no major things could be wrong, right? So maybe we can start the car right now. Let's try if everything works. Okay, so everything looks very normal, uh, no weird leaks, no weird noises, the car's um, RPM has gone down to about 900 RPM, but it's still a little bit cold I think, So, uh, but that's great, it stays there nice and quiet, so no major issues. So um, I think this uh, was the full surface uh, we did today and everything turned out fine, so I'm very happy with it. Whoa.